are up, and they are from Gutenberg, New Jersey, Brian O'Donnell, and from Staten Island, Anthony Riccobono. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, guys, tell us a little bit about where you grow up, where you grew up, uh, things you like outside of sports. Uh, well, I grew up uh, originally in uh, Queens, New York, in Jackson Heights, lived there until I was about nine, and then uh, that's really how I became a Met fan, living in Queens. Uh, most of the kids I went to school with were all Mets fans, my dad was a Mets fan, uh, so it was just a natural progression. When I was 10, I moved to Pennsylvania, grew up in uh, what I guess you would call a very rural Poconos. Um, uh, you know, it was a nice place to grow up. Friday night football was, was a big deal there, and uh, now I live in uh, New Jersey. Uh, from Staten Island, just graduated from Syracuse University. Uh, I like sports. Uh, outside of sports, I'm a big movie and big TV guy. I'm always watching uh, different TV series. Like right now, I'm watching Breaking Bad and uh, Six Feet Under simultaneously. So, uh, yeah, I, I, like, I like to think I'm very cultured. Watch a lot of, I watch a lot of movies, a lot of TV. If you spend an hour with an athlete, present, former, who would it be in one struggle? Uh, probably Char Charles Barkley. Uh, I think a lot of times you, you see athletes being interviewed, especially current ones. They don't tell you anything. Like Derek Jeter, if he's interviewed, that'd be really cool, but he just gives you politically correct answers. I think if you spend an hour with Charles Barkley, he'd be very honest, very candid. I think that'd be a real fun hour to spend. Uh, I would actually... Uh really like to uh, speak with Babe Ruth for an hour. Um, you know, there's so many legendary stories about him, and, and you almost feel that many of them are myths, and you really wonder what the guy was like, you know, if you met him face to face. But what athlete would you have would you chew out for an hour? And it could, again, be somebody from the past, it could be somebody now. Uh, probably Roger Clemens, I know Mike was talking about him. Uh, not even because he took steroids, I'm not mad about that but he clearly is lying about taking steroids. And I hate it when athletes pretend that fans and the media are stupid. Like they think they're better than us. We clearly know what happened. Just admit what you did and move on. But when athletes think they're smarter and better than regular people, I, I don't think how anymore. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, I would chew out Randy Moss. I, I know he's, he's big in the news right now, given his retirement yesterday. But a guy who had all the talent in the world and just the wrong personality to go with it. You see the, the peaks and valleys in his career. And it's annoying as a sports fan to, to see a guy like Randy Moss who should have been so much more and, and could have been so much more to teams like the Raiders. And even when he played the three teams last year, he could have been so much more. And he, he threw it all away based on his personality. One more for each of you. At, at what age, obviously you guys have aspirations of being a sports talk show host. At what age did that sort of set in for each of you? Sorry. Uh, when I was in college, uh, freshman year of college, my friend uh, said he was going down to the student radio station. And Where'd you go to school? Uh, Brown University. So I went down to the uh, sports radio station. I just tagged along with them. And I was actually the one that signed up for it. And I became the, the sports director for, for Brown and broadcasted some of the uh, Division One games as well as uh, a talk show, a weekly talk show. I probably want to do, to do sports talk radio maybe since like I was in elementary school. I've always listened to Mike Commando, my family always listened to it, it's always on the car. And I really never wanted to have an office type job or anything like that. So, I mean, radio is not the easiest thing in the world, you have to prepare. But once you go on, you're just talking to people, talking about sports. And I always thought if I could do what I do for fun for a living, that'd be a pretty cool thing. Indeed. All right, let's get to the monologue phase. Brian, you are up first, two minutes, and you're uh, on the clock. So yesterday I was sitting at work and uh, came across that Rex Ryan believes that this New York Jet team uh, is his most talented Jet team. And I don't, I don't disagree with him. I don't doubt for a second that the Jets are a playoff team barring any catastrophic series of injuries to key players. But when you look at their wide receiving core, it consists of Santonio Holmes, who I absolutely love. I have nothing against Antonio. But the rest of their receiving core, you have Jericho Cotri coming off surgery possibly going to end up in the PUP list. And if he doesn't end up in the PUP list, today it comes out that he might end up being traded. After that, the four and five receivers are a bunch of no-names, undrafted free agents for the most part, who you're not even sure would be able to make a practice squad for most teams. And then last but not least, the signing of the weekend, Plaxico Burris. And Plaxico, to me, is 
is not going to be the same as he was pre-incarceration. You're going to be very hard pressed to name me a professional athlete who took two years away from their respective sport in their 30s, not in their prime, not in his 20s anymore. The guy's 34 years old. The guy's legs go on in the mid-30s. It's very rare. You look at Randy Moss. Randy Moss, 34 years old, all of a sudden the legs go. T.O., mid-30s, all of a sudden the legs go. I really do not believe that Plaxico Burris will be a good signing for the Jets. I think he's going to be a disaster, to be honest with you. Yes, he can be a go-up-and-get-it-wide receiver, but what the Jets are going to be lacking is what Edwards and Brad Smith provided between the 20s. I don't doubt for a second, obviously, Plaxico can go up and get the ball with the best of them. But between the 20s, will he have that step to be able to break away from the defensive back? And will he have that step after he catches the ball to gain a lot of yards after catch? The Jets are extremely thin at the wide receiver point. This is not their strongest roster. All right, stay right there. Unless you don't want to answer our questions. All right. So it sounds like you're sort of pessimistic about the Jets. Where, where do you see them finishing this season? Like I said at the start of the, uh, the monologue, I still believe they're a playoff team barring any any major injuries. The problem I have with the Jets is you're providing uh, you're providing Mark Sanchez with a rather thin wide receiver core, given he's still only a third-year quarterback, he's still developing, and it's an awful lot to put on his shoulders. This isn't Tom Brady taking Rasheed Caldwell and Troy Brown to an AFC title game. This is this is a third year, and he's still a development quarterback. He's not at that championship level yet. Do you think the Giants will fare this season? It's not looking good. Uh, I think the Giants really need to sort out this OC situation. I don't believe they're going to get a first round pick. I think they're going to have to lower their demands. I think, I think the faster this gets dealt with, whether he, be, he gets traded or he comes down from his demands, it's got to be dealt with. I also am very concerned about the offensive line. The offensive line losing multiple starters from an offensive line that over the last five seasons has really been the strength of the team. That's really been the strength of the team over the last, since they won the Super Bowl. And you really wonder, will Jacobs and Bradshaw be as productive? Will Manning be able to stay off the grass? It's a big question right now. I really believe that the Giants right now are looking like a 7-9 to a 9-17. And who's going to the Super Bowl this year? You know, I'm, a, I'm actually a Chicago Bears fan, and uh, it guts me to say it, but I, I still believe the Green Bay Packers are the best team in the NFC. Um, in the AFC, uh, I think it's either the Steelers or the Patriots. If you put a gun to my head, I'm going with the Patriots. I think the I think the playoffs last year was a little bit of a fluke. I do believe the Jets can beat them in a you know, one-game situation. Anything can happen. But I believe that with the additions, I believe they're just going to get over the hump this year. They're going to get back to the promise. I think the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl. All right, switching to uh, baseball, how do you expect the Mets to handle Jose Reyes? I think they're going to re-sign him. Uh, I said in my, uh, my online monologue that I was all against uh, trading Jose Reyes. I think that if he ends up walking, you have to end up taking the draft picks. Uh, so with the money that comes off the books from trading Beltran and trading Payrod, I think you give him what he wants. I'm not giving him seven years. I'll offer him five or six. Uh, but in the long run, I think Jose Reyes needs to be a Met. He's a fan favorite. And I think he, he provides what not many people do. One heck of a leadoff hitter. It's leadoff hitters like that just don't grow on trees. All right, Brian, thank you very much. <laughs> Anthony, you are on the clock. The Yankees made a big mistake by standing pat at the trade. They can't expect to go into the postseason with Bartolo Colon as their second best starter and expect to win the World Series. It's just not going to happen. And there weren't a whole lot of dominant starting pitchers available, but Ubaldo Jimenez was clearly available, and I think Brian Cashman really dropped the ball by not trading for Jimenez. I understand that you don't want to give up the farm for just one player, but it's Brian Cashman's job to make sure the Yankees win the World Series this year. And the prospects might help the Yankees in two years, they might help the Yankees in the next year, but they're not going to help the Yankees this year. Menace will help the Yankees this year. And I think in baseball, you always trade prospects for a proven commodity. Is Montero going to be a great catcher? I don't know, maybe. Benuelos may be the great next pitcher, but I know what you bother with Menace is. He's a front of the line starting pitcher. And I think you regret the deals you don't make more than the ones you do make. 
You look back at the Santana trade that never happened a couple of years ago when the Yankees didn't want to give a fuse to Kennedy. You look at last year when the Yankees didn't trade for Cliff Lee. That's two possible championships the Yankees could have had, but they were afraid to make the deal. And I think it's because Brian Cashman has become so afraid to trade these farm players when really, I don't understand why when you look at what Hughes has done, what Java Chamberlain has done, they haven't been very good, they've been inconsistent, they've been hurt, and Ubaldo Jimenez wouldn't be a trade to mortgage the future. Jimenez is your future. You get him, he's cheap, he's young, he's inexpensive, and I think it's a deal that you have to make. And for those who say that, well, Jimenez isn't a very good pitcher, I say that's nonsense. He was great last year, he was good the year before. If you look at his numbers this year, he's good away from Forest Field. So I think it's a trade you have to make, and even as they say uh, he might have some medical problems, if he passes his, his physical, then he's fine. 877-337-6666. Anthony or Cabona with you. Your call is coming up. Bill Hughes, the 18-game winner of last year, or the guy with an ERA somewhere around 9? Uh, I think it's more of the guy with the ERA somewhere around 9. I, I'd like to think it's a little bit more in the middle, but he was very bad in the second half of last year. His velocity is still a little bit down. He's not nearly what he was in the first half of the season, and he hasn't shown us any signs that he's going to be the guy that he was in the first half. Really, it was just one very good half of baseball, and I haven't seen anything since then. Turning to football, how do you expect the Giants to handle the OCU in your situation? Uh, I think if they get a first-round pick, they're going to trade him, because it's not great to have an unhappy player on your roster. But if you're not going to get a first-round pick, I don't think they're going to trade him. Jerry Reese isn't going to give in, and they shouldn't. Because there's nothing else he's going to do. He's reporting to camp. He doesn't want to get fined $30,000 a day. So I think there's no real incentive to trade him for 50 cents on the dollar. If you can get a first round pick for him, you're pretty deep at the defensive end position. You make the trade. But if not, I think Jerry Reese is going to play. He's going to keep him. And if Ossie stays, he's going to play. Rex Ryan, love him or hate him? Uh, I think you have to love him because players want to play with for him and players play hard for him. Now I know other people in the media might not like him. I think a lot of Giant fans, including myself, get annoyed when he says, oh, we're going to win this year, and then they don't win. And the next year he says, oh, now I know we're going to win the Super Bowl. But I think that's what you want out of your coach. Maybe after a couple of years it won't work once the Jets don't keep winning the Super Bowl. You can't keep making those promises. But it seems like he's getting the players to come to him now. So he's got to keep doing what he's got to do. What's your opinion of Tom Coughlin? Uh, he's a Super Bowl winning coach, clearly a very good coach. Uh, disciplinarian, and you remember a couple of years ago, there was questions about, oh, should the Giants get rid of him? Does he have to relax more? And then the next year, he won the Super Bowl. So I think he's obviously a really good coach. Probably one of the most underrated coaches in football, and I don't think gets nearly enough respect around New York. People are always talking about, could this be his last year? Should he be fired? But he's been really good for the Giants. All right, well, you can see the two coaches in New York, NFL coaches, have very different styles. Yes. Which one do you like better? Uh, I like Tom Coughlin because he's won a Super Bowl. Rex Ryan talks a lot. He's gone to a couple of NFC championships. Hasn't won anything yet. And like I said, if he keeps saying, we're going to win this year, we're going to win this year, and it never comes, eventually it's not going to work anymore. All right, Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you.